All right, we are ready to go through this worksheet. The addition, number one, the addition of a catalyst to a chemical reaction provides an alternate pathway that, so quick sketch, potential energy diagram. All right, now let's switch the color. What happens with the catalyst? We start the same, we end the same. But, like this, all right? So what happens? Does it change the potential energy of the reactants? Nope, nope. Now does it increase the activation energy or decrease? Well, activation energy goes from the reactants up here to the activated complex, so like this. So what happens when you add the catalyst? Does that activation energy go up or down? You should see that it goes down, okay? All right, number two. Given, given the potential energy diagram representing a reversible reaction, so here's my recommendation. Before I write anything, this represents reactants. This represents products. The very tip top, this represents the activated complex, and this between the reactants and the products is delta H. Okay, now let's get to the question. The activation energy for the reverse reaction. Okay, so the forward reaction goes like this from reactants up to activated complex, down and over to products. So what does the reverse reaction do? Well, the reverse reaction goes from products up to the activated complex and then over to reactants where it ends. And what is activation energy? Well, activation energy goes from where you start. So remember the reverse reaction starts over here from where you start to the top of the activated complex. So that what two arrows would that be? B and C. All right, given the potential energy diagram of a chemical reaction, again, what's my suggestion? Reactants, products, activated complex. Uh, it's not even on here, but remember, the distance between the reactants and the products is delta H. So which arrow represents the potential energy of the reactants? Well, here are the reactants, and their potential energy is measured right here, from the bottom up to there. So that is B. Okay, number four. The addition of a catalyst to a reaction will cause a change in the Remember a diagram from over here? What did a catalyst change? The activation energy. It decreases it. The potential energy of the activated complex is equal to the sum of, okay, so we have reactants, products. Remember the tip top is the activated complex. So it is all of this from the bottom all the way up there. So what is that? Well, it is Y, okay, but that tells me that's 30, that doesn't help me. So it's Y and Z, that's not an option. It's W and X, aha, that is an option. All right, and number six, a potential energy diagram for a chemical reaction is shown below. On this diagram, draw a curve to show how the potential energy diagram will change when a catalyst is added. So again, catalyst, we start the same. We end the same. So the beginning and the end should be the same because remember that is products, that is reactants. Those should not change. What should happen is it should take less energy. So that activated complex needs to come down because we need less activation energy. So like this, okay? 
base your answers to the following questions on the information and the potential energy diagram below. Chemical cold packs are often used to reduce swelling after an athletic injury. The diagram represents the potential energy changes when a cold pack is activated. All right, so what do we have? Reactants, products, activated complex, and then remember the distance between the reactants and the products is delta H, and that is C right here. So which lettered interval on the diagram represents the potential energy of the products? Well, we said the products are here. So it goes from the bottom up to the products, and that is D, all right? Number eight, the potential energy diagram pictured shows the reaction X plus Y yields Z. When a catalyst is added to the reaction, it will change the value of, all right? So let's label reactants, products, activated complex. So what happens when we add a catalyst? Remember, it starts the same, but the activated complex comes lower, and then it ends the same. So that represents my catalyst, okay? So what did it change? Well, did it change number one? Did it change the reactants? It did not, so anything that has a one is wrong. Did it change number four? Did it change the products? Nope, it did not. So what did it change? Oh, it changed the activation energy and the potential energy of the activated complex. All right, interval B represents what? So reactants, products, activated complex, and B goes from the reactants to the top of the activated complex. That is activation energy. C would be just activated complex. Potential energy of the reactants would be E, and potential energy of the products would be G. All right, the potential energy diagram shown represents the root the reaction R plus S plus energy yields T. Which numbered interval represents the potential energy of the product T? So first let's talk about what is this. Since energy is being added in, this is an endothermic reaction, which you can see by the pathway. Look, the products up here end up with more energy than the reactants. That is endothermic tip-top activated complex. So which numbered interval represents the potential energy of the product? Product over here, that is this. All right, in a reversible chemical reaction, a catalyst changes the rate of what? Both forward and reverse reactions. The energy needed to start a chemical reaction activation energy. All right. According to the potential energy diagram shown for the reaction A plus B yields C plus D, the activation energy is highest for, all right, so we have forward reverse, forward reverse. All right, so let's see. For the forward reaction, we start here and end here. So reactants up to products. So that is endo, okay? And then for the reverse reaction, we start here and end here. So this way, right? So that is exo. So first let's determine the forward was endo. So yes, no, this one is wrong. And the reverse is axo. So we are down to a 50-50. Now we need to determine which activation energy is higher. Well, activation energy goes from where you start up to the top. From where you start up to the top. Well, you can see this arrow is much bigger. So the forward reaction has a larger activation energy. 
which change affects both the rate and the activation energy. This only affects rate. Okay. Number 15. The potential energy diagram of a chemical reaction is shown. What is the minimum amount of energy required to initiate the forward reaction? So right here, that is reactants, products, activated complex. The minimum amount of energy is the activation energy. So it goes from where you start to the top. Okay, So we started at 50. The top is 80. So I subtract those. What do I get? 30. All right. The reaction A plus B yields C plus D plus 30 kilocalories. So see this over here? That indicates it's exothermic because heat or energy is a product. It has a forward activation energy of 20 kilocalories. What is the activation energy for the reverse reaction? Okay, so I'm going to use this space down here to try to draw this out. So I know it's exothermic, so I'm going to start, go up, and end lower. What do I know? This, the heat of reaction. So that is the distance between reactants and products is 30, right? I know that the forward reaction has an activation energy of this. So forward goes from where you start to the top. Okay. Now what is the activation energy for the reverse reaction? Well, reverse starts here and has to get up to the top. So it's 30 plus 20, which is 50. And then the last one here in the potential energy diagram, which letter represents the potential energy of the activated complex? B, right? Activated complex is up here. And there we go.